Hey, also about Marconi, you know, in, in uh, the seashore. After he did this, he had uh, most of the wireless tied up in most of the steamships, didn't he? Oh, yes, 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 he did. And All communications? After, after, now, his, this station that was here ran for several more years from this location with those towers. And then, during World War I, it was taken over by the military, mm -hmm. and uh, so they could communicate with the ships and, and, and all. And right after that, the, uh, the sand kept eroding off yeah. the cliffs, and they were worried about having to you know, make some changes. So they ended up building a huge transmitter site down in Chatham, and that became WCC. The call sign of this station was CC when Marconi mm -hmm. first started it. They, the call sign in Chatham is WCC. Is that still the other one in Chatham? Well, that's now just a historic site. Okay. Uh, uh, RCA had taken that over mm -hmm. years later, and uh, but that's that was what was used for communicating with ships all over the world. Yeah. For many years. Yeah. yeah. WCC. L yeah, a lot long before uh, what we're what we're with those things today. Right. And one of the one of the individuals that I uh, was, who was with us down here at the Marconi site, he was one of the. One of the operators from down at WCC. He's quite an old timer and I, got some I, great stories. Yes, I, I, yeah. I seen him. Yes. Uh, you know, it's amazing too when uh, people now, when they when they're out there cruising. You know, I'm talking about people going away on cruises, Caribbean, way wherever. You know, there's water, and they think they still have a wireless. Room oh, sure. Aboard. They're looking for the yeah, right. Yeah, it's they're looking uh, for their internet connection and their email. Yeah, and yeah. I the, not the last cruise, but about five years ago, I was on uh, <coughs> one of the Norwegian ships, and I, I hooked up with a. He actually, he was a radio man, and he uh, <coughs> he was one of the last of a breed that they still had that type of communications. He actually had the key, and I, I did a, I did operate one night up there, wow. which you know is which I was happy to do. But I caught up with him on the on the Maj on another Majesty before they left Boston here, and it was his last cruise. He was from Sweden, and I think he worked for. Uh, uh, it's, it, they don't own their own uh, communications. That's all leased out. I think it's oh, RCA okay. that's still here. Yeah, it could very well be. But it, I, I really didn't realize how much Marconi controlled not just the airwaves, but he also controlled an awful lot of the news getting to the ships. The wireless was delivering news. You know, I think they were tied up to either the New York Times or one of the New York newspapers, and every day they used, somebody used to get on the wireless and, and tap out the news or. Uh, now, be, besides positions and all that stuff. Well, on some of the ships, on. they would actually have their own um, little newspaper that they would run. Like on the transatlantic cruise, they'd have a small three or four page newspaper mm -hmm. that they would hand out to the passengers, which was the news of the day coming off the wire service. So, uh, which, 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 which they still do. Which, yeah, which okay. They, which right. they still do. Okay, but, they, but, but back then it was all done with people uh, on, on uh, Morse yeah, code. Uh, on Morse right. code, yeah. That's right. And uh, they're, still mon they're still monitoring because of third world countries. It isn't completely dead. You, you, you know, we've talked about it before. Uh, it isn't completely dead. But official monitoring by the Coast Guard, and I think all that ceased. I think several it, years ago. Yeah, it, right. it's just it's just right. gone, and it, it's too bad too because we, we've we've seen ourselves with, you know, with CW how CW really really works. But I know it's still out there, and you'll be proud. I mean, I've I've made a couple of contacts <laughs> in the past week or so. Huh? Try it this weekend, then on that. Uh, yeah, matter, matter of fact, that's yeah. why I was listening right. for this morning. There was yeah. a uh, there was a, an in four in there calling CQ uh, down low, lower part of the band. One sixty is an all CW. No, but oh, no. A, a lot of people would lead you to believe it is. Well, because of the way that it, the propagation of the signals on that band, it's the preferred mode to be able to get to get the signal across. If you're running a lot of power and you're talking with people that are a little bit closer in, sure, there, are, there is. There's plenty of plenty of phone operation further up in the band. But but you're you're also looking at the, at the shadow coming across, right. the, the, the you know, which we explained. Right. I think when we went down on Bob's, the shadow. About well, the and, gray line. Yeah, yeah, the gray line coming yeah. across. And uh, I remember uh, Don Smith. Uh, I don't know if you remember Don. He lived in yeah. Braintree. Oh sure. Yeah, I can't think of his call. Yeah. He, uh, he moved up to Maine. AE1Q? AE1Q, thank you. Oh, yeah. Do you want to have to write it down with you? He used right? to do the VE sessions with us. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Well, well, Don, yeah. Well, Don used to get up in the middle of the night. He was a Boston school teacher. He used to get up in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. and he used to come and he'd say to me the next day, hey, I work you know, with JA, something in Japan, mm -hmm. or something in the Far East. And I used to say, so? He says, "Yeah, but I." And he, he was did trying, it on eighty meters or one. Yeah, yeah, or exactly. Like and right. I mean, right. you, you can you can just see him. I mean, he was he was quite a guy. The only guy, him, I know that actually 
when he moved, he picked his spot where he wanted to build his home mm -hmm. up in Maine. And it was in a valley between two mountains. It was in I a know, valley between two I mountains. Know, I know. Yeah, and what was it? Rome? Uh, I, I forget the name of the Something like that up yeah. there, but a yeah. funny guy. Well, while I, I'm talking here, I was talking to Randy. You, don't, you guys don't have to get this. But I was talking to Randy that does all the YouTube. Oh, well, great, all the ham videos. Yep. K7AGE. Mm -hmm. And I, I talked to him. And he sent us a couple on uh, the introduction of PSK, which we'll get into uh, after we probably go down and see Jim. Good. Uh, that, and he also uh, was good enough to uh, send along some satellite stuff. Oh, great, great, very good. So, so that's, uh, we'll, we'll get we, into when that. When we do that one, I'll bring along the satellite antenna that we have to. Yeah, yeah, and he, uh, I viewed one of these, and he was doing it out in California. It was, it was kind of funny. People must have thought they were nuts. There was probably six or seven guys they met for breakfast like you guys do down mm -hmm. at uh, the Hartland Kettle there in the morning, Saturdays. And after breakfast, they all went out with their coffees. <laughs> Everybody's got an antenna yeah, yeah. with a walkie-talkie, yeah. you know? Yeah. Imagine just driving by you, just, you know, coming out but and you, ooh. I, I know, but you know, what we were talking about here with Marconi, and what he was trying to establish then was being able to get a reliable communication mm -hmm. from one side of the Atlantic Ocean to the other. And now, Fast forward a hundred years or so, and being able to take something, and these guys, you know, maybe look a little bit crazy doing this, but here they are with a little antenna like this, holding it to a walkie-talkie, mm -hmm. and they're talking to through a satellite to someone that can be several thousand miles away, or in the next town, or in the next town, of or course, time. of course. But I mean, or or on the International Space Station. Yep, it's yep. Absolutely, you know, just staggers the imagination when you. When you, when you make the comparison with what, what, what we used to have, you know, the way it used to be. How many satellites do we have up there now? Do you have any idea? I don't know what the actual count yeah. is because... Um, 12 and 13 come down, right? Oh, oh yes. I didn't come yeah. down, but yeah. I mean, they went up. By the way, I wanted to make one, mention one thing. When the news of the successful communication took place with Marconi, and he received the message from the King of England, they had to deliver the message by horseback from his station in Wellfleet, they had to go by horseback down to the railroad station that was down in Wellfleet in order to be able to telegraph the message back. So they didn't, you know, it's not like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, yeah, they were kind of trying it's to establish so the handwritten message, handwritten message delivered by a horseback uh, to a, a courier to someone who uh, then, then brought it to the, the in a different, telegraph station. In a different uh, form of code, too. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah when they yeah. send it over the, te the, the uh, telegraph, telegraph yeah. that's right. Uh, yeah, it, it, once again, you know, uh, code and uh, the railroads. Yeah, that's right. That was the American Morse code. Yeah, yeah. Every every railroad had a telephone pole running beside it. Right. And it was all for communications. Yeah, just just unreal. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, so we 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 covered that part of the Marconi. What would you say? There was a hundredth, and what did you say? The the next one was, that you went down was a hundred and sixth. Well, I've been down most most every year, and yeah. we actually do a couple of things down there. We also do have a big event worldwide on Marconi's birthday, which is in mid-April. So mm -hmm. we've been pretty active uh, with, the, with that same radio club doing that down there. This year we were down for the 106th anniversary okay. in 2009. How, so yeah, we'll, how see some, we'll see some of that video Conditions later. were pretty good down there for you? They were pretty good. They were pretty yeah. good. And, and we, as things will have it in, in January, it's not always the best time to try to assemble things. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. so when I get to, happened to get down there, I got down there. Some of the people had been working on Friday. And some of the antennas worked, some of them didn't work. So we were out there, the temperature was about, when I left my house, it was two degrees yeah. to get down there. Um, so when we got there, we ended up putting up an antenna on a 70-foot tower, well, stringing beautiful. up a 160-meter dipole. And, OK, well, let's, yeah. uh, let's let our viewers see this. So if you want, you'll see the 100th anniversary of the Marconi celebration down in Wellfleet. And I believe that was in 2003. Three. Correct. So we'll be here when you get back. So without anything else to do, sit back and enjoy the, 2000, the 100th anniversary of Marconi in 2003. 